Okay, get ready with me while I talk about my weird obsession with Jeffree Star. Um, and I, by the way, my obsession with Jeffree Star is not weird. Jeffree Star is a superstar. Jeffree Star is a, a mega star. Jeffree Star is a star that even stars fangirl over. You know, I saw him trading um, tweets with Lana Del Rey back in the day when she was still into that kind of thing, you know? And I kind of want to talk about it. I am getting ready to go drop off my laundry, but it's in the bougie part of town. So I might meet someone interesting. So I'm gonna try to look decent. You know, it's laundry day. I sometimes I want to look really lazy, but the women here are so beautiful and like I'm kind of like the resident foreigner. So I kind of have to, you know, I can't just be my little lazy going to Target self that I might be in Canada you know, <laughs> or in US. You know what I mean? So I kind of have this that I threw together this morning so I could get some work done and feel like a half decent human being, but like. I hate it to be <laughs> to be honest I hate it so I'm gonna be getting new glasses soon so I'll need y'all to help me pick those out when they come in but let's talk about Jeffrey so there's this um, podcast of him that he recently did on this like mental health podcast I'm going to link it below I'm probably going to make a couple of videos here talking about it just because I don't know I'm like <laughs> This is like right up my alley and that's like one of the reasons that I like him. And by the way, like I don't really, I don't get starstruck over anyone. Oh, that's a lie actually, no. There are some people I would get starstruck over. I would feel so overwhelmed with emotion that I, an appreciation that I wouldn't be able to like do anything or function and I would in my mind I would feel like there was no point for me to even do that do you know what I mean but there's like people who you're so overwhelmed by them the best thing is just to stay away do you know what I mean and I could be like like if I have a if I have if I've had crushes on people in the past I would just like actively avoid them it's like how do you know I really like you you never hear from me you never see me and if I see you I cross the road that's how you know <laughs> that I really like you um but yeah he's definitely one of them and I have this weird like history with him throughout my life he's and I, I don't even have we don't even have a word for what he is like I don't even want to use the word icon it's not even good enough like he basically invented the internet he, he basically invented personality marketing something and you know there are people uh, were those gunshots did y'all hear that i'm gonna have to listen back over this yeah stuff like that happens where i live so yeah it's just the truth of it i need more concealer today this is the derma blend professional flawless creator i get this on amazon it's such oh it's pure pigment it's so light it completely blends in oh yes yes please give me that coverage it's not going to settle into those fine lines that i'm not getting a whole lot of because i use tretinoin here in mexico but yeah, look at what it does like it just makes things a bit better and you know what even if my hair is not perfect or my outfit's not perfect, at least I can create the illusion of having perfect skin and that makes me feel good. Okay. So, um, yeah, he, it, okay. So the thing that I love about the internet and this like social media sharing lifestyle people is that it's mostly it was an opportunity for the people who are not cool in real life to take their revenge right all the people who were like interesting and quiet in high school and who got picked on and stuff we're the ones that get got all the attention on the internet 
Um, case in point, like look at any of your favorite, you know, big time YouTube celebrities. Um, yeah, because it's like the drive to do something like that, you know, to become famous online or whatever, or to be, to express yourself and be seen, like it comes from having not been seen and having, you know, yeah, like, so anyway, um, so I wasn't surprised to hear that. Yeah. And, and most of the people who do great things in this world, um, who are willing to look stupid, who are willing to publicly make mistakes. These are people who have already kind of been there before and we don't really care. Um, or we are people who are just like driven by intrinsic things and not overly influenced by society, whether it's friends, family, being popular, like whatever it is. And that is a blessing. Um, you know, I haven't made a video like this in a while, so I'm kind of struggling. So I'll probably redo this at some point. But um, I remember being friends with Jeffree Star. And, you know, in this interview, he's on MySpace. And in this interview, this woman's like, why do you think um, you were so popular on MySpace? And he's like, well... You know, David Bowie was gone and Marilyn Manson was gone. These were the boys who were wearing makeup club. And so I was like the new like boy who was wearing makeup. And I mean, maybe that's the case. However, I beg to differ. And I think it's cute. You know, when you're as big time as, as he is and you've had that much success, it's and you're and you're that beautiful and rich and smart and like everything else. It's kind of a good idea to play yourself down a little bit, right? So that's socially smart of him to say, yeah, it's because I was a boy wearing makeup. But no, Jeffrey Star has star quality in a way that I don't even like. I that that people just don't usually have, you know. And he had that back during Y2K when I was on MySpace. You know, I had my little whatever. And I remember like you got a, I don't remember if it was a friend request or if someone added you or what, but I remember looking at that little icon picture and going, oh. And to me, it looked like a really beautiful woman, right? I was like, whoa, this like super popular you know, flashy looking blonde girl from California, like wants to be my friend, like, okay. You know, like I didn't think too much of it, you know, back then it wasn't the way the internet is now where it's like, you know, every single person is going to add you or friend you and you know, it's like spam bots or whatever. Like it, that wasn't a thing back then. You know, all of my friends on MySpace were like local people from Edmonton, a couple of them, I have never actively met in real life and we're still friends on Facebook to this day. Shout out to Sean Benjamin. I know he like has followed my stuff and we've like chatted and we tell each other happy birthday and we live in the same city and he's known me since back then. And we've never actually met. We just like followed each other's like trajectory in life. Like that was me in high school, MySpace. And uh, I remember just seeing that picture and the picture transmitted energy. It made me feel alive. It made me feel excited. I saw something beautiful, something interesting. And then when I clicked it and I was like, I thought it was, I thought, I thought it was a woman for a, a while. And then I kind of caught on like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know? And I was like, oh, okay. And, um, was it strange to me that Jeffree Star was actually a boy or whatever? Like, no, it didn't really. And that's the thing that I think um, he does really, really well. He has a very strong masculine sense about him, even though he's doing all this makeup and everything else. And he also ha represents this really seductive, beautiful, sparkly 
feminine goddess. So it's like he's so good at embodying both. And when you have someone who ha comes in to this world with like that much energy and, you know, that much embodiment and amasses that much success and that much attention, I really feel, and I know people are going to think this sounds insane, but I really think we're seeing some kind of incarnation of some kind of God, some kind of really powerful energy coming through in spirit form, really. And um, yeah, it, it's truly amazing. Um, and I also saw him once in West Edmonton Mall, leaving the Mac store. And he was just walking like a normal person. And it's like the Marilyn Monroe thing where it's like, this is just a normal person walking with like makeup and sure looking attractive. And he's tall too, he's like six foot three. But just existing, there's like a vibe and energy, like something that call, comes off of him that attracts your eyes and that makes you feel like you're in the presence of greatness. So, you know, I don't know. And I know he has a lot of scandals in the past. Um, I think they're probably totally true. <laughs> you know, like I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, he's not racist or he's not this or that. I don't actually know. Um, I don't suspect that's the case. I think that, you know, I know I think some really rotten things when I'm upset and I may say them to myself. Like I don't have the bravery to like go and say things or like to people. But I really, I don't, I don't judge people on stuff like that. Um, maybe he's racist, maybe he's not, I don't care, I don't know. Um, yeah, so for me, I'm not trying to like be friends with this person or advocate for their personal character or anything like that. I'm just saying that this person exists as, yes, an icon for like this human greatness, right? Jeffree Star is the Michael Jordan of the internet. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. And um, yeah, I, I just, it's crazy having known someone and, and been in their periphery since high school. And oh, I don't know if I made this clear, but like, yeah, on MySpace, like these people who got popular, they were just like adding a lot of people. It's not like I personally felt like he was like, oh, let me follow Adele. Like, no, Adele with her little good night moon shivery song. What else? I used to blog on MySpace. I got started blogging on MySpace because of Jan Arden, who is a, you know, just, she's an Alberta girl, you know, and I loved her music. This girl's a, an ISFP probably. And she's just so, her music is so good. And um, unfortunately, you know, she's been posting a lot of political opinions and stuff like that over the past couple of years. Um, again, I don't care if she's like completely on the opposite political spectrum from me and promoting, you know, all these liberal things and SJWs and everything else. I don't care. I love what she stands for for me, which is creativity. I love her beautiful music. Um, and she used to keep a blog back in the day. So I'm talking like Y2K, like 2000. So we're talking 24 years ago. She used to keep a daily blog. Now this was unheard of, you know, and I remember I'd always go and refresh the page when I got back to school because school was the only place you could use the internet. And I'd be checking for Jan Arden and she'd be writing just some beautiful prose about what was going on in her day, observations she had, reflections on her life. And that's kind of what I do on this channel. And that's kind of what I started doing um, on the internet, like in general, you know? And that inspired me. And, you know, she lives in this beautiful, she's always showing off her beautiful house uh, in Alberta. And she lives in an area, I used to work as a forest ranger, so I used to live in a beautiful place, a log cabin, like literally 10 minutes from her beautiful house now. Uh, um, so there's something sweet about seeing that these people that you admire have similar sensibilities. Like when I was living in Montana during the pandemic and then Jeffrey Star went and became that rat, uh, yak farmer in Wyoming, I remember going, what the hell? But then like knowing that, you know, we had similar sensibilities in that, I was just like, I don't know, I just felt something. And I've had like dreams about him and stuff like that. It's like super weird. 
Um, and um, again, like when I am inspired by or talking about these people, I know that they're, well, maybe not in the case of Jeffree Star. I suspect something's going on with him, but like in general, <laughs> I think that you know these people are human, you know, like it's not like I have it in my mind that like I want to meet them or I wish I could be friends with them or like anything like that, you know, um, yeah, I'm just saying that like he exists as this beautiful icon, this this reminder that calls me into my greatness as a creator you know, to express and to share life um, and to really be authentic and be unique, take chances, believe in yourself, you know, everything else. And maybe he was part of like, you know, the weird Hollywood people who um, use satanic rituals to be God. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um, and again, I don't care. It's not about, you know, assassinating someone's character or whether I agree with what they do or not like I don't you guys know I don't believe in all that stuff you know you you see this image of me here you hear the things I choose to see on the internet but like I'm not a perfect person I've done a lot of dumb terrible things in my life that nobody could ever know about so yeah oh I need to work on my angles I need to get that myspace angle you think I would have it down by now so yeah you got the cat um, laser beam in the background yeah so I love making these like off-the-cuff type videos I don't know what kind of music this is but it's pissing me off so I think I'm gonna go um, on this podcast Jeffree Star is talking about his childhood and it's really touching me so far I haven't even listened that far in but I knew that his father committed suicide and when we go, th and his mother was an alcoholic, when we go through these like really, really soul-wrenching experiences in life, we can take so much away, you know? It, it, they pull us back like an arrow, right? They, further back than most people who had kind of average lives and average childhood could never understand they pull us back so much and if you can find your dharma you can get out of that that arrow pull when you're let go when you're released when you release that energy into the world you are shot forth faster and farther than anyone could ever imagine and even though you may still live in pain right um, I remember, oh God, Jeffrey Star's videos, you know, his cars, his mansions, and when he was with Nathan, when his dogs died, you know, the, the, the makeup launches, you know, just the creativity, the audacity, you know, the Shane Dawson stuff. I don't know. It's, it's fascinating and um, it's inspiring. So that's all I've got to say so far. I'll listen to more of the interview and I'll make another commentary. Now I gotta go take my laundry in. So thanks for watching. <laughs>